So, hey, Rick, you know what's awesome? What's that, Billy? Going to summer camp. Oh, yeah! Okay, so... What... This whole thing started with you posting up that picture of meatballs. Yeah. And here, here, here's, man. So, Bill Murray, Ivan Reitman, pre-Ghostbusters, it's, it, and coming from a horror background, you've got summer camp, and it's also right in that same time period is Friday the 13th so the, yep. the, the film kind of looks similar it's a little mm-hmm. bit grainy you got the camps and the what better sort of 80s subject is there to talk about than summer camp because it seems like yep. all the things happened in summer camp yeah I mean early <laughs> early 80s that was just a that, that's what parents did with their kids I mean you know nowadays you've got the internet and all these things that are your babysitters now where back then you sent your kids off for a few months and uh, <laughs> they, they went to summer camp. And uh, that was something that we, I think for the majority of us, we kind of went through. Uh, none of my summer camps were anything like any of the ones we're going to talk about. No. <laughs> in some in some cases, that's a good thing. And in others, it's not right. a good thing. Cause... Right. <laughs> I didn't run into Angela, so, you know, not a bad right? deal there. <laughs> But you know the whole thing started with uh, with meatballs, right? So, and I post, you know, I, I commented on your picture because of all like those in all of that whole series of movies. So I guess one through four there are. I think the the ones that were on cable yeah. when I was a kid was probably going to be. I guess which one was the one with the alien part three? That's part two. Uh, okay. So, but the one that always stuck out as was the one with Bill Murray because obviously yeah. Bill, when I was a kid, then it, when it was run, running around on cable, Ghostbusters was already out, and so you already had you know Ivan Reitman and Bill Murray. So if they had the property to play it, they were playing Ghostbusters or, or they were playing Meatballs. <laughs> so yeah. you you had that. Uh, but man. Just the, that opening scene on Meatballs where all the kids are like lining up to go to summer camp. And are you ready for the summer? And they're they're just running for the bus, and they're they're already pranking the uh, the, the the owner of the camp. Yeah. Um, poor Murray, man. <laughs> he's like, um, you know, it's like you got Bill Murray. He's that that camp counselor who's a jerk with a heart of gold. You know, it's like so perfect. Like you always just wanted to go to this place. Yeah. And it was played so often when I was a little, like a little kid, like eight nine eight nine years old, that um, or maybe a little older, like maybe like or ten eleven years old, because you know it's like the the, the smooching in the back, <laughs> you know, stuff like yep. that. It's like there's those little things that you're like, ah, oh, I want to go there. That sounds awesome. Sneak, sneaking under and, the girl, uh, sneaking under the girl's cabin, you know, and trying to look up through the floorboards, and oh, you know, all that stuff was so teen influential. You know, well, we, I, you know, we weren't. I wasn't a teen yet. I mean, this was, you know, eleven years old or so. This is where you would be. <laughs> you would be mischievous for the point of not even really know why you're looking. You were just looking because you knew you it, weren't supposed to. You know exactly. <laughs> And, um, you know, so, like, my summer camp experience was Boy Scouts, and there's only boys. Wow. So all the the girls were across the lake. You Like, you could see the Girl Scout camp on the other side of the lake, Ah. but you had to be one heck of a rower to get yourself over there. (laughs) And, but, so, yeah, we did not have co-ed camp, but we, you know, we had shenanigans. It was was a good time. (laughs) But... uh, the, the camp I went to was co-ed, but there was not a competing camp anywhere around that you were going to, you know, you know, have have challenges with or a field day or whatever. So you were just out in the middle of nowhere with a bunch of kids you didn't know, and it stank, you know? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's Tennessee. I mean, what do you expect, right? <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're in South Texas, right? <laughs> like, when Boy Scout camp was Camp Karankawa, Karankawas are primarily known... 
for not only getting completely driven to extinction by the settlers, but also they were cannibals. Wow. So, I mean, it's like, you name your camp after that, you're... (laughs) 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 But, um... I don't I don't have any ideas what what our camp was called. Maybe Camp Hatchet Face or something. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, dude, summer summer camp memories. Whether they were real, whether it was from the movies, you have this idea of a summer camp that you're like, okay, well, this is a place that I go, mm-hmm. and this is this is what we do. And um, there's so many movies about it, and I think a lot of those movies were inspired by the the. The culture of the Northeast, yeah, you know, it's like because apparently, like, if you watch movie, a uh, movies, for example, like uh, Dirty Dancing, hmm. like we, t- you know, that's a whole summer, yeah. Like they just they just mothball their house and they go to this resort for a summer and they live there, yeah, for like, for like three straight months, and that's cool. I guess if you got wow. the bread to do that. If we mothballed, <laughs> we mothballed our houses because the snakes were out. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, I was older, and Dirty Dancing is not one of the subjects of the of the of the, the show. But I was, yeah. I mean, I remember watching that movie when when it came out with my parents, you know, and, and just sit there and just be realized, like, wow, they're. They're not there for a week. They're there for <laughs> months. For a long time. But like, <laughs> it's not like Lost Boys where it happens over the course of a weekend. <laughs> it's, it's All right. Like, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get on my soapbox here for just a second. Being that you brought this Did movie it. up. because I, I And I don't want to diss anybody that is a fan of Dirty Dancing. Because I really doubt we do a, an episode of You Know What's Awesome and we talk about Dirty Dancing. Because, right. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. I went and seen this with my girlfriend, who's now my wife. To go see this when it came out, which, again, girls love it. I get it, you know. But, uh, ladies, you know how you look at us and you can't believe that we like certain movies because they're so far-fetched. You know, <laughs> like the Rocky movies or any of your action flicks with Van Damme and that stuff. Well, guys really look at Dirty Dancing the same way. Because we know in our minds there is no way Patrick Swayze would leave the good-looking blonde for the big nose girl. That's the tr- that's just ain't gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. Mm-mm. So that's as far fetched as you know Rambo, you know cauterizing a shot that's all the way through his stomach <laughs> with gunpowder. <laughs> it's just as ridiculous to us. So uh, yeah, you're just like this is this doesn't this doesn't happen in real life. <laughs> and, and I don't want to piss off our dirty dancing fans. That's not what I'm trying to do here. I'm just saying it, apples and oranges here, right? <laughs> if, if, if we have some dirty dancing fans, at least they can relate to the summer camp part of it. Yes. Right? Because that's what I was talking about. It's like, oh my God, people actually went to summer camp for mm. months. Yeah. Like, I went to summer camp for a week. And when I got out of there, it was just like, oh my. Like, who um, who would want to go to summer camp with their parents, though? I mean, that would be I, weird. Ex- you know? Right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's one of those things about, about camp and camping. It's like, I remember a couple of years ago, whenever they were talking about integrating the Boy Scouts with the Girl Scouts, and like, like going, I was like, dude, there's a reason why boys and girls are separated, and it's not because of sex. It's because boys pee on things, <laughs> just because it's there. Yeah, that's true. And they they and they talk a whole lot of mess about certain body parts and functions that they have no idea what they're talking about. True. And they laugh, and they don't know why. All day, and that was Boy Scout camp. Is that any like, different than now, though? Than for us? I mean, that's well, still well, kind no, of what you but, and I do. But whenever they're like, "Hey, I think it's a good <laughs> idea to put these two, these, this bunch of people in 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 in, right. in the same room together," it's like, ah, maybe I ought not to do that. <laughs> some Girl Scout's gonna be like, "Oh my God, it's a snake," and some boy's gonna be like, "Let's pee on it. <laughs> Let's fart on it." <laughs> yeah, man. Meat Meatballs is is the ultimate camp film. I mean, like you said, Bill Murray is just the character that you want to be your counselor. Uh, yeah, you, but you, for a second, you, you I, I want to talk about part two. <laughs> dude, hit it, dude! Because part well, two, part two is kind of where I was becoming the teenager, and Kim Richards was in the movie. 
<laughs> and there you go, folks. I mean, it's You're like there. It might have been about some campers, but <laughs> <laughs> there was a spotlight. I, I know it was about it was about Kim Richards, and it was about Meathead, which is the ET, you know, mm. ripoff that they had in there. <laughs> Me, Ted. What's your name? Me, Ted. <laughs> Meathead. <laughs> Me, Ted. Who are you? Me, Ted. What did he say? I think he said Meathead. Me, Ted. Meathead? Meathead's what he said. Meathead. <laughs> so Danny and I say that all the time to each other. So we both grew up on <laughs> we both grew up on Meatballs too and you know, Meatballs Two is absolutely ridiculous compared to the first one. But it's, but it's fun, yeah. But it's fun, yeah. Well, and that, that was another thing. Like, you know, we had talked about certain franchises, so we'll talk about now. It's like if if there was a certain movie that was successful, they immediately got a sequel. And oh yeah. Even if the movie was not set, even if the original was not set up for a sequel, yeah. They set up. They they just would drop a sequel on you that even like had a completely different setting, different actors, different storyline. Like it didn't have to. And if you were making that sequel, if you got lucky, you could get one of the maybe even just the actors. <laughs> May, maybe a character. Like, yeah. you know, like, there's a lot of sequels out there that's like, oh, yeah, you know, this happened, and Bob was the man, and there's, like, a Hall of Fame that has a picture of Bob, right. and they had to get licensing for to use Bob's picture <laughs> on that wall for, you know, for that sort of thing, but there were, you know, yeah. I think, because, um, you know, when we're talking about summer camp, the, the sleep, sleepaway camp, Friday the 13th, oh, yeah. um, you know... They they took Even, it, they took that thing that we grew up being a part of just what you do and then turning it into, you know, how can we get to to kids at that age that everybody's involved in? Yeah, summer camp, man, and mm-hmm. yeah, I mean that changed. You know, that might have brought the end to summer camps as we knew it. It's <laughs> it's possible. Everybody got scared. Like, I'm not sending my can- kid. Like, they're either going to be in a sex comedy or a slasher. There's, like, there's there's no there's no middle ground, right? <laughs> there's no like learning how to tie knots or row boats. That whoever's teaching you how to row boat is a is a is a square, and he's going to get left on a raft out in, the middle, in the middle of the sleep. Or and then there's people. There, there's naked girls and like masked killers running around in the woods. Or so, like, you're, we're or you're scared. Your, you're scared your son will come back home wearing a big cowboy hat and cussing like Ricky does in sleepaway camp. <laughs> 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 if somebody's gonna release the piranha. Oh, yeah, <laughs> like absolutely. That's not summer camp as much as it's like spring break, but it's still kind of it's, summer camp-ish. Like it's, yeah. you know, <laughs> the. Uh, but yeah, I was like, oh, you know, it's like if when I when I googled summer camp movies, it was like, oh, Friday the Thirteenth. Oh yeah. Yeah. What's funny is not really. It's not open yet. It's just counselors. That's they're, right. They're, yeah. they're, they're, part two, same thing. Yep. It's not open yet. It's just counselors. Part three, not summer yep. camp. It's somebody, some random person's barn. Part four, some random person's house. Yep. Like they're famous for being summer camp killers. But it's not until part six right. that Jason actually goes on a rampage and in a summer camp with actual campers present. Like, right. It it took five movies of the summer camp killer to actually. <laughs> Wait a minute, we're missing <laughs> something <his> here. <laughs> <laughs> and you and I, I mean, we we've talked about this a lot, but you know, we and Danny and Scott, we all have a a very big love for part six anyway. So mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. Well, and we'll talk about that someday. I, honestly, I think the further we put it off, the better, because it's <laughs> been kind of a... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's been, been that thing we've been chasing all these years already. Right? <laughs> but uh, but no, strangely enough, that, that I was sitting there looking through, and I was like, ah, you know, summer, like, yeah, you look at part two, you know, the camp, mm-hmm. like you got all the counselors, and they're all randy and running around doing, you know, brawless, tank toppy things. The camp's not open yet. The kids aren't at summer camp. It's right. not. It's not. Um, no, nah, we're not there yet until part six. Right. It's, yeah. <laughs> and and out pops Madman Mars. Right. Oh, that's the wrong one. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, and this one goes further. This one goes up into the early 90s. But the Adams Family Values. Sure. Which, that honestly is one of the more, ult- that, that is a total ultimate summer camp movie because the Adams Family themselves is kind of a throwback in general to mm-hmm. the times when people would just dress up to be at home. Yeah. You know, but at, we could do a whole show on the Adams Family, but... They send their kids to the nice little summer camp off in the Hamptons, and <laughs> their kids end up destroying it, which is <laughs> awesome. <laughs> because what would you expect Wednesday and Pugly to actually do, except for... <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. But I think that's the last real solid look at that whole camp world well, of the I, I'm I'm a fan of Ernest Goes to Camp. Mm. I loved Ernest Goes to Camp. <laughs> and one thing you never do to a family of badgers is this. <laughs> abity 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 <laughs> So <laughs> speaking of such my daughter she's nine now, she was eight last year, summer camp, Girl Scouts. First year, week long camp. And, um, now of course it's not a month, it's a week. Yeah. And, um, it's my daughter, not my son. Yeah. (laughs) But she's got to go to summer camp, right? And so the weeks leading up to it, and and my daughter's extremely independent, she's very friendly, she's, she loves everybody, she's never met a stranger, she's just super cool. Because of that, you have to dial her back sometimes, and you have to be like, Juliet, I need you to understand that raccoons are not trustworthy. <laughs> if, you, if you see one that appears friendly, don't... Yeah, <laughs> don't don't be fooled. <laughs> <laughs> kind of that same thing. It's like, hey, look, here, here's a whole bunch of pictures of animals that you're not supposed to mess with, and they've got it <laughs> pinned on the cabin door. Like, <laughs> don't. So... Um, this is, this is what's funny. This is how the, like growing up, going, going camp and stuff. So my wife signs my daughter up for summer camp. Oh, honey, do you think she's ready? I was like, I think she's ready. She's good. If not, Hey, they'll call us and we'll go pick her up because that's what they do. Oh no, no, that's not how that works anymore. See the way, the way that it works now is you take your kids to summer camp. They want you to pre write all of their mail. Ah. You 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 pre-write all of their letters, and then you drop it off to them at when you drop them drop off. Drop them off. <laughs> and the reason why is because of the timing of the mail. Mm. So you drop them off on a Sunday. If they if they put something in the mail, you'll never be able to respond to it because by the time you get it and respond yeah. to it, they'll be home, right? Yeah. But I'm also thinking of. It wasn't the sleepaway camp, but it was the uh, summer camp nightmare where the kid's trying to write the letter home because the, the counselors all went nuts and yeah. started factions and they were killing people. <laughs> and the kid's trying to write the letter home. And the guy's like, no, you can't write that. <laughs> but all that aside. My best friend Timmy got killed today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Please come get me. <laughs> yeah. The f- they're like, lunch is great, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, drop off my kid. She has this, like, little mom and daddy moment. You know, it's like, we're very proud, but she gets her, her bunk set, and we can hang out for a little while, and her friend's <clears> supposed <throat> to show up. But then her friend calls, her friend's parents call, and they're like, they're running late. And we have to go. So we have to leave her there. And this poor little girl sitting on the end of her bed with no friends in a room full of strangers. And just kind of with this little sad look on her face. And we leave. And my wife immediately starts crying. Yeah. And we get home. And we can't call. Like, there's no phone calls home. Because the counselors don't want to deal with a thousand little girls crying to go home, right? Right. So you can't call. You don't get... Like, there's... So... They, they post updates, like they'll post to the p- Facebook page. And there's one picture of like 30 girls all getting this lesson in, because it was horse camp, so she gets to ride horses. Mm. Sitting there, 
There's a picture of Juliet standing off to the side with her arms crossed and kind of looking like that. And my wife is like, oh, my God, my baby, she does not look happy. We have to do something. I'm like, babe, we can't do anything. We can't do nothing until the day we pick them up. Like, it's just, she's fine. We just have to persevere. We go pick her up. After I've talked my wife through a couple of those freakouts, we go pick her up. Juliet pops out. She's got her hat on. She's got her backpack on. She's got a big, giant smile on her face. She's like, hey, we got to go get my bag. It's over here. She's completely and utterly, com- completely grown up, independent. Yeah. Like, hey, y'all are here? Mm-hmm. Cool. We're like, how was it? She's like, it was awesome. Yeah. She starts telling us the stories. My wife's like, do you want to come back next year? She's like, I would go back right now, but it's over. <laughs> like, she just loved it. So it was so right. perfect. She's excited to go again. Hopefully this whole thing is gone by then. But sure. Sending them out sending her out to the woods for a while probably wouldn't hurt her either. So well, but uh you know, building that individuality, man, I mean, you know, they they've got it built in already for the most part, but being able to expand on that and being around different people instead of your same school buddies you're around all the time. It it'll really prepare them for when they get closer to the junior high or high school, when they have to split and possibly go to a bigger school or a different school, mm-hmm. that ability to just kind of meld into everything else, it's a great lesson, man. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a good character builder. I was so proud I could hardly hold it. I was I just bet. like, oh, my God. Like, dude, you're, you're so awesome. Cause, yep. Yeah. And then... I don't know. I'm sure you saw the video on Facebook. My other one, her biggest aspiration is uh, saying bad words. <laughs> I'm like, I don't ever remember that being something that I wanted the to hit a certain age and say, yes, now I can cuss. <laughs> I, I mean, that was kind of a shock for me, actually, because, I mean, I just... I remember being a kid, like, in, like again, you know, 11, 12 years old and having certain words that you shouldn't say around your parents, so you kind of kept it on the DL. I would never have announced to my parents that, hey, on this date, <laughs> I'm going to start using bad words. That's awesome. <laughs> that was awesome. You... I mean, I feel I, like she's still not allowed to say bad words. For sure. <laughs> it's just funny that that's she... a goal. I mean, that's, that's hilarious. Dude. And the thing is, is, you know, you want to go, hey, when you go to camp, you'll probably hear all that. So, uh-huh. <laughs> well, this whole toilet paper riot thing with the quarantine, my, my daughter was like, so what's up with that? I was like, well, you have to understand, baby. When I was in Boy Scouts and we went to summer camp. If you ran out of to- TP in the, latri- in the latrine, so if you went in like, you went in the latrine, if there was just a couple few squares left, if you used the last of it, you had to walk all the way up the hill to mm-hmm. get a, a, a resupply. Nobody wanted to go walk up the hill. So you made that thing first. You made it last as long as you could possibly last it. <laughs> and second, nobody went up the hill. You just ran over to the next camp. Like after dark, and stole their TP. <laughs> it was kind of, it was kind of a, a a back and forth, like whack a mole. Like we don't have any TP. Well, I went and stole some last night. Like, like is anybody run up to KP? Like, no. I don't, like, why would I do that? That's that's a really long walk. <laughs> so then Juliet got all inspired. She's like, all right, when I go back to summer camp, I'm going to steal all the toilet paper. <laughs> I don't know if this one really qualifies for a summer camp movie, but Major Pain <laughs> is kind of like was, it's kind of like meatballs from but from a military standpoint. Right? Yeah, because you still well, had the battle a, with the other the other groups and all that stuff. Kind of in the same vein, but man, Damon Wayans and that I've I've ripped off those lines <laughs> so many times. He's, he's got that little chubby when, kid standing out there, and he's like, bleh, bleh, what you laughing at, Pokey? You found a piece of candy in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't do that anymore. Yeah, no. you, can't, you, can't, you can't call kids Spaz anymore. <laughs> <laughs> His nickname's Spaz. <laughs> yeah. in, in Meatballs. Like, yeah. 
the 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 hot dog eating contest. That kid is not fat comparative to no. what we have these days. That's that like, guy's just yeah. That's like Ogilvy in in the the, the Bad News Bears. I mean, is it o- mm-hmm. not Ogilvy? But uh, the other boy that was the hind catcher. He was supposed to be yeah. the, the big the big heavy kid. I'm like, he's not any bigger than a lot of the kids now. You know. Like, and, well, Chunk, Chunk in the Goonies. Chunk? You look at him, and he's yeah, like, okay, he, he's got a little, he's got a little belly, but that's he about is, it. He... Yeah. <laughs> well, and that's you know that's that thing of you know we talked about it before. You remember when Dom DeLuise was considered the big heavy, the heavy guy, mm-hmm. and you look at me like he really wasn't that big compared to, you know, a lot of the people you see now. So yeah, they're they're they're. I mean, it's fast food, it's, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot, way too too many hot dogs, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, the funny thing is, like, I've never been, I've never been a big fan of sports, and mm. the reason I'm not a big <clears throat> fan of sports is Bill Murray's speech and meatballs. I've <laughs> I've completely forgotten about it, right? Like, I, it just in, integrated itself into my mind. Sure. But when I was when I was a teenager. Like late, like early twenties, right? So I worked at this uh, bike shop in a big box sporting goods store, and the Houston Rockets were in the playoffs, and they were in back to back playoffs, and they they won back to back championships. It was a big deal, right? Yeah. Like, and working in the sporting goods store, we bought twice as much of whoever they were playing mm. as their own stuff because Houston's that kind of city where yeah. It we're a we're a bandwagon city. Like I, I hear about certain cities in the country where they'll go sit in the rain and the snow on a losing season, yeah. and just keep on keeping on. And I'm like, well, you know, I wouldn't do that anyway. But that is some here, nah. <laughs> <laughs> if it's if it's raining, they close the top of the stadium, and if it's snowing, there nobody's going nowhere. And if they're losing, nobody's buying tickets. Yeah. Nobody's like it's a, it's a fair weather city. And so I very much developed this entire philosophy of it just doesn't matter. It's like <laughs> oh the you know the Texans are playing today. It's like I'll figure out what happens tomorrow by looking at a score and not have to sit here for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> like let's let's say the Super Bowl winning team shows up and our team beats them. I don't get any more money. It just doesn't matter. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it just doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. But it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. I tell you, it just doesn't matter. 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 Even if we play so far over our heads that our noses bleed for a week to ten days, even if God in heaven above comes down and points his hand at our side of the field, even if every man, woman, and child held hands together and prayed for us to win, it just wouldn't matter because all the really good-looking girls would still go out with the guys from Mohawk because they got all the money. <laughs> it just doesn't matter if we win or we lose. It just doesn't matter. 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 It's so great, dude. And yeah. I'd forgotten about that entire, not the whole speech, but I just, I remember Bill Murray going off on a tangent, but like not too long ago when I watched this movie, I was like, that's my entire philosophy yeah. on so many things. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> and, that, and that was really the birth of the Bill Murray that we know and love. It's almost like he really found his character at that point. Because really, mm-hmm. if you look at Ghostbusters, you look at Stripes, any of that stuff, it's the same character. It's exactly the same character, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, it just doesn't matter because it's Bill Murray, right? <laughs> Bill, Bill Murray's always been brilliant because just that same thing. Like, he's always playing him, like, in yeah. a Tom Cruise sort of way. It's like, it's not Tom Cruise as 
character. It's character as played by Tom Cruise. Right, right. And Bill Bill Murray's the same way as, but the cool thing is Bill Murray's got a lot of charisma yeah. and he's just got that sort of cynicism. And I don't know if you've watched that uh, the movies that made us with Ghostbusters where Dan Aykroyd promised Bill Murray without having Bill Murray agree to do it. So they were like building up this entire multi-million dollar media machine. <laughs> and they just hoped that Bill would show up on day one because <laughs> it was all riding on him. And they had a couple of backups if he didn't show up, but it wasn't as good. Yeah. And not to go too far in the weeds, but we need to do an entire show on Rick Moranis in Ghostbusters. Yeah. Because that's very possible. Awesome. Yeah. (laughs) Just Rick Moranis in general. I've always been a big fan. I mean, uh, probably who I identified with more than Bill Murray, (laughs) because I never was as cool as Bill Murray. But I was, (laughs) but I was definitely as cool as Rick Rick Moranis. He's just one of those guys you love, right? I mean, it, it, kind well, of the same deal. No matter what he's in, he, he has that likable approach to everything, and, and you just relate to that. Mm-hmm. Again, that, that charismatic doesn't care. He's just he's just here to either, like, whether it's to earn a paycheck or to, you know, run a camp or kill a monster or whatever, whatever he's there <laughs> for. He's just there, and he's just him and he's not going to pretend to be somebody else and i i have always identified with bill murray yeah. with rick moranis the same the same sort of like rewatching ghostbusters a couple years ago my wife was just like hey let's watch ghostbusters lewis toy was always he's a side character he's, yeah. a, he's a minor character compared to the whole thing that's going on but Every second of film that he's in is a scene stealer. Completely. Yeah. Like, he's yeah. just... Like, the whole movie is about him. And I never realized... Like, he was always there, but I never realized just how th- thoroughly mm-hmm. hilarious he was in every second of film that he's in. Yeah. And it started making me think about other movies that he was in. It was like... This guy... Earned every penny of every paycheck that he ever earned because or he ever yeah. cashed because he's amazing. Yeah. And uh, there was a we we were blessed to have that yeah that bunch of guys. Um, I'm 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 certain there was a bunch of guys that did, didn't make it into that club, but between Rick Moranis and John Candy and Bill Murray and. You know, just between the actors and the writers and everybody else, like it was, it was a phenomenal time. Yeah. And you know that because that wave crested and has never quite come back. Well, you're kind of saying it all. It's, it's so many of, of, of you. It's your ex ex uh, SCTV and Saturday Night Live group. You know, John Candy, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, Chevy Chase, man. Mm-hmm. I, there's not a movie Chevy Chase has made that I didn't like, <laughs> you know, and you know my my comfort food whenever I'm sick mm-hmm. is pulling out Spies Like Us and just watching it again, you know, or Doctor Detroit or Modern yeah, Problems, absolutely. you know, all those. We're not even on the subject of summer camp anymore. <laughs> oh, how about the uh, Great Outdoors? That's there you go. The Great Outdoors, John Candy. And- John John Candy and Dan Aykroyd and what was what's always great is Dan Aykroyd's Dan Aykroyd's always been well Dan Aykroyd's a strange dude but Dan Aykroyd can can take the baton left hand right hand you're oh, like yeah. okay I need you to be I need yeah. you to be the funny man he's like okay I'm so weird that I'm out of left field okay Dan Aykroyd take Take straight man, yeah. and he's like so straight and buttoned up and down the line that you're like, why is he in a comedy? Right. Like, but he's, yeah. So so Dan Aykroyd, I think, is a pivot on so many of these other guys because he can play straight and he can play funny and it just kind of depends on what the scene needs. Um, you know, Dan Aykroyd's a right hand man to John Belushi. Right. John Belushi's a train wreck. Yeah. Like he's so un- unpredictable, but he's hilarious when, with everything he does. So 
Dan Aykroyd naturally is a straight man to him. Right. But then you you put Dan Aykroyd with somebody else, and he's a little, you know, bassomatic. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing, too, that, that that people don't really know. I mean, I'm, of course, I'm a big Die Hard Kiss fan, but uh, Paul Stanley and Donna Dixon were an idol, item for quite a few years. Dan Aykroyd stole her from Paul Stanley and married her <laughs> while they were making Spies Like Us. That's awesome. Yeah, but can you, I mean, <laughs> but you think about it, though, you're like, wait a minute, I'm Paul Stanley, <laughs> the quintessential rock star, center stage, the rock star. Yeah. And I just lost my girlfriend to Dan Aykroyd, <laughs> Dr. Ooh. Detroit. <laughs> Every Playboy centerfold ever said that their turn on was somebody that can make me laugh. You're a funny guy, yeah. <laughs> there you go. There's hope for us yet, Billy. I'm going to say, dude, my wife did not marry me for my looks. <laughs> Look at my hair, dude. My hair is like, I haven't been able to get a haircut because uh, of uh, social distancing. Oh, is, that, is that what that is? <laughs> well, wow, this, this is also headphones and kids and some of it standing up on end because, ah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> let me just uh, all fair let me just tell you it's been a rough couple of weeks <laughs> but uh <laughs> but yeah dude there's with uh with what we're doing with this show and just having so many fun things to talk about i don't care if we stay on subject because yeah. what do i care <laughs> stealing toilet paper was the epitome of my summer camp experience right like I don't... <laughs> well, mine was the the shame of being caught with your elbows on the table in the lunchroom, right? Where they make you get up and run around the tables because you did something wrong, you know. So it's <laughs> all those things happen too, you know. But uh, it, it's amazing again, just reflecting back because you don't really think about it a lot. But it's funny how, just like you said, the thing of meatballs comes up and it brings back all these memories of being dropped off, mm -hmm. saying goodbye to the folks. If you're if it's your first time, you're scared to say goodbye. If it's your second time, you're like, yes, hurry up, leave. Yeah, I'm <laughs> Cause, out. Because I'm ready to get going. <laughs> and, uh, wow, I mean, just, uh, it's one of those things that I think uh, is, is just not a popular thing anymore. Kids have too many allergies and whatnot now, you know. I I have to I have to agree. I, I, I think it's, because with, with Boy Scouts, and again, um, separate camp from the girls. We didn't have a co-ed camp. But we did have a bunch of boys running around, like, lighting fires in the woods and playing with knives and axes and <laughs> had a bunch of counselors trying to keep us from burning the place down. And that was a, it was, it was a honored and tradition. So, I mean, obviously they did it summer after summer. <laughs> you know, it was like, I, I remember we had, you know, we had to have, we had cots and mosquito nets and we had these old military style tents that kind of, it was a... If, if you were to look at it from the side, it kind of looked like a trapezoid. So it was angled down on the back, and then it had a little flap in the front, and then held up by stakes, and then there's yep. two cots in there, and then the foot lockers in front. And the thing was, I obviously, I know the counselors, but like not the counselors, but the scoutmasters were probably up the hill, in the in the big cabin, smoking yeah. cigars and playing cards because our taps, like military style, right? It's because Boy Scouts, so it's right. like you're gonna hear that little dun 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 dun. dun. Yeah. Ours was like our our counselors every morning would play the uh, beginning of the uh, girls by Beastie Boys. <laughs> so I I have this like every time I hear it on the radio, like I almost want to sit up straight and be like ready ready it's time to, to go say the pledge. <laughs> Because I remember being asleep, and you'd hear a whippoorwill. You're familiar with whippoorwills? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'll try to find a sound bite, but if you're laying in your bunk and, like, dawn starts to hit, you'll hear this little whistle that's like... Yep. And you start to wake up because there's these birds in the bushes that are just making noise. And you start to wipe the sleep out of your eyes, and you start to think, okay, like, where am I? Is it cold? Am I under the blanket? Like mosquito net? Am I? And all of a sudden, you hear like. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> Girls. 
<laughs> like you start sitting up, you're like, okay, by the time it makes it to the uh, main part of the song, we're all supposed to be out of the out of the tent and like standing at attention and like getting told what and we're lining up for breakfast. <laughs> but that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty awesome. <laughs> I wish they, I remember who was those guys. Cause... They didn't play Beastie Boys at my summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> There's all a little boombox, you know, like the the, the 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 serious guys are up the hill. We're we're teenagers. We're making it happen for you, right? <laughs> but yeah, we've got another show to talk about. So, do you have any final thoughts on summer camp? Uh, well, if anything, uh, to the listeners out there, if you're on the Facebook page, or follow us on Instagram or Twitter, or whatever, hey. Post your favorite movies or your favorite memories, pictures, whatever you want to do that has to do with your summer camp experience. Uh, that'd be fun to see, you know. So uh, mm-hmm. if you want to share anything like that or say, hey, you totally forgot Parent Trap when you were talking about your movies. Or Dude, anything. I have it written down. <laughs> <laughs> so if, if there's something that we've overlooked that you think should have been talked about, then we'll try our best to, to give you props for bringing it up to us. But... Uh, it's just another piece of, of, of who we are. It's a fabric uh, that was put together by just the experiences we've had growing it up. And those movies uh, movies imitate life, right? So, I mean, that's kind of the whole deal and make it a little more, you know, popular than it should be, I guess. But, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, whatever. It's <laughs> That's my, my, again, my one daughter went to horse camp and she watches a little cartoon about girls with horses and she's just like... Yeah, like you're, you're probably a, this is probably out of your age range right now. She's like, nope, I'm still watching it because yeah. I rode the horses and they ride the horses and I'll I know what's going horses. on, right? Yeah, That's so good. it's 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 awesome. Cool. Well, cool. Well, um, this has been episode five of the You Know What's Awesome podcast. Um, hit us up on our Facebook, our Instagram. Hit us up at the website. Uh, or not the website, I don't the uh, Facebook group. Yeah, the group. <laughs> I will edit that out. Uh, we're right <laughs> at the end. But uh, in the meantime, man, stay awesome. Adios. Adios.